Hey guys, today we are going to look at solving quadratic equations by factoring. We're going to answer the question, how do I solve quadratic equations by factoring? So here are the shortened version of the steps. Um, remember that solutions are just x-intercepts, which is where the y value is zero. So the first thing that we are going to do is rearrange the equation so it equals zero. So that's step one, set equal to zero. Then step two is to factor the non-zero side of the equation using the best method. So step two, factor. And then the third step is to set each factor equal to zero and solve for those x-intercepts or solutions. Remember the zero product property is why we can do this. If we have two things multiplied that equal zero, then one or both of them equal zero. So there's the short step set equal to zero factor set each factor equal to zero. And then remember to write your answer as a solution set with curly brackets. And then we're going to sketch a graph of the parabola with the solutions that we just solved for. So let's look at this first one, two X squared equals five. So first step is to set equal to zero. Definitely need to set this equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract five X from both sides. And I get 2x squared minus 5x equals 0. Now I need to factor. Step 2 is factor this non-zero side. So I have two terms and they both have an x in them. So I'm going to factor this by greatest common factor. So I'm going to pull out an x and then I'm left with 2x minus 5 equals 0. And that is the furthest that I can factor this. So now I'm just going to set each factor equal to zero. So let's start with just X. I'm going to set that equal to zero. So there's my first solution, X equals zero. And then the second factor is two X minus five. So I'm going to set that equal to zero. And the first thing I would do to solve that is add five to both sides. And I get two X equals five. And then I divide by two and I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a decimal since I'm gonna graph it. So it'll be a little bit easier to graph. So it's X equals 2.5. So my solutions are zero and 2.5. So let's sketch a picture of what that parabola would look like. It would be facing up since A is positive. It's going to be like a smiley face. So it's facing up. It's going to have a root at zero and then at 2.5. So it would look something like that. All right, let's look at the next one. 3x squared equals 81 minus x squared. I need to set this equal to zero. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get the x squared on the same side. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides. And I get 4x squared equals 81. And then I'm going to subtract 81. And I get 4 x squared minus 81 equals Now I need zero. to factor 4x squared minus 81. There is no GCF, and I notice that these are both perfect squares and I'm subtracting them, so I can use the difference of two squares pattern to factor this. I will take the square root of the first term. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x. And then the square root of the second term, so the square root of 81 is nine. And then I make one group a plus and one group a minus. So now I'm just going to set each of these factors equal to zero. Let's start with two X plus nine. I'll set that equal to zero and then I'll solve for X and I get two X equals negative nine and then divide by two and I'm gonna change this to a decimal since I'm going to sketch a graph with these intercepts. So X equals negative 4.5. Okay, then the other factor was two X minus nine. So I'm gonna set two X minus nine equal to zero. And this time I add nine to both sides and I get two X equals nine and then divide by two and I get X equals positive 4.5. 
So the solution to this equation is negative 4.5 and 4.5. And let's go back and look at the equation when I set it equal to zero. It was positive a since I had a 4x squared. So that means that my parabola is going to be facing up and I'm just gonna sketch it going through those intercepts of negative 4.5 and positive 4.5. So negative 4.5 and positive 4.5 means that the y-axis would be the axis of symmetry. All right, let's look at number three. It is already set equal to zero, so I don't have to do that. I just need to factor. I notice that all these coefficients are even, so I can take a GCF of two. And then I'm left with x squared plus three x minus four equals zero. And now I am going to factor this trinomial. It's a basic trinomial, so I don't have to group. All I have to do is figure out what multiplies to negative four and adds to three. So what multiplies to negative four and adds to three, that would be a positive four and a negative one. So those are the two numbers I use to write my binomial factors. So the factored form will be two times x plus four times x minus one equals zero. And now I just set each factor equal to zero. Let's start with two. If I set two equal to zero, that is not true. That's not a true equation. So we throw out that solution. That's not a part of the solution set. Let's look at x plus four. Let's set that equal to zero. So all I have to do to isolate x there, subtract four, and I get x equals negative four. And then the last factor I need to set equal to zero is x minus one. And I would add one, and I get x equals one. So there are the two solutions, negative four and one. So I'm going to sketch a graph of this. The parabola will be going through negative four and one on the x axis and x squared was positive. So my parabola will be facing up like a smiley face. So intercepts were negative four and one. So negative four and positive one. And there is the parabola. All right, last one that we need to factor, it is not set equal to zero, so let's go ahead and set it equal to zero by subtracting the seven x. And I get two x squared, and then I'm gonna put minus seven x next, so it's in standard form, minus 15 equals zero. So there's no GCF, so now I am going to split this negative seven x term so that I have four terms and can factor by grouping but I need to figure out the numbers that I'm gonna to use to split that negative seven X first. So I'm going to do two times negative 15. That's what I'll have to multiply to. So two times negative 15 is negative 30 and add to negative seven. So multiply to negative 30, add to negative seven, that would be negative 10 and positive three. So I'm gonna split the negative seven X up into negative 10 X plus three X. So my new equation will be 2x squared minus 10x plus 3x minus 15 equals zero. And now I'm going to factor this by grouping. So the GCF of 2x squared minus 10x is 2x. And then I'm left with x minus five. And the GCF of 3x minus 15 is three and I'm left with x minus five. And then I factor out the common binomial and I get two x plus three times x minus five equals zero. So I have factored it. Now I just need to set each factor equal to zero. So let's start with two x plus three. 
I'm going to set that equal to zero. So I would subtract three and I get two X equals negative three and then divide by two and I get that X equals negative 1.5. And then the other factor was X minus five. And when I set that equal to zero, I add five and I get that X equals five. So the two solutions to this quadratic equation were negative 1.5 and five. And when this equation was in standard form, A was positive, so my parabola will be facing up like a smiley face. And it has the intercepts of negative 1.5 and five. So about right there, negative 1.5, and more over here at five. All right, one last question. It says, what are the relationship between the factors and roots of quadratic equations? So let's take a look here. So here my factors were x and 2x minus five. And then I was left with zero and positive 2.5. Okay, here my factors were 2x plus nine and 2x minus nine. And then I got the solutions negative 4.5 and positive 4.5. Okay, this one we can easily tell the pattern. I had x plus four and x minus one, but my solutions were negative four and positive one. So it was the same numbers, just opposite signs. And then same thing here, two x plus three and x minus five. I got negative 1.5 and then that x minus five factor turned into positive five. So what is the relationship? They're the same numbers, just opposite signs. And the reason for this is because we set each factor equal to zero whenever we solve for the roots.